Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. Admiring his big nose. Let's try and get this one right. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns Admire towards him. the sea to gaze at it. Hey, what a pretty man. Well, slit his throat. Attack from the right. The oh, killer no. leaves his hiding place on the right hand side. The grass he approaches trebles. silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. Daddy, it's all right. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. He's supposed to open Everything it at the right page. It appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Are we actually getting any closer to solving this? I feel like we didn't actually get much evidence this time. I think he did it. Oh, just a minute. I'm getting dressed. So we know the killer is Alexander Bonaparte Crust. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes. Indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. That's crazy. Mr. Cust, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Mm -hmm. What's the point of that? Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me, Hastings. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah, Maybe Thora Grey Oh, okay. Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, oh, boy, I would will be here that. soon. We must prepare ourselves. I already said that. I'm going to have to be tidying up now. Oh, my God. They're already here. Take Too late. Of the Wait. Silence to examine them. Poison dart. Um. Oh, I got a spring. Does that mean I can spring a trap on someone? What am I doing? Okay. Let's start with Guy standing up. Oh. Franklin okay. Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. 
Something that's unique to people who travel. Hmm. I hope to concentrate on my guests. Great. So I have to do it in a specific order. Okay. Donald is always on edge. We didn't invite the drunk guy. Leave me alone. Stop stop with the circles, I don't like it. He's caught himself shaving. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. This is the epitome of excitement. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. This was the sister, wasn't it? She's got bogey. Evening. Necklace. Looking at Donald. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? How rude. The song says, Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. I think she's a bitch. Sometimes I love a brunette. Sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. What perverse song is this? And that was easy. I wish to thank you all for oh, coming. Okay, cool. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? It is none of you. Megan, dear girl, please be patient. Mr. Poirot, how dare you address me by my first name? Please excuse me, Mademoiselle. I am Lady Bernard. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name, by chance, starts with B. Must we go into that? Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. No, not like that. I want to help you, but I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say if she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Allons, surely sisters have no secrets. She never spoke about any of that to me. Do you believe me or do I have to repeat myself? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Hair, clothes. Her new dress. Oh, it was. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Oh, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. <sighs> and yet it never happens to Carl Yes, B. she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Oh God, we got it out as well. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. This bunch, good luck. Uh, bold. Uh. 
Oh, it's that one. So that cancels you out, Donald. Bold, bold, bold. But he wasn't an attractive man, so he must have a good personality. Apart from the serial killings. That one's not hard. No, is the killer impulsive? No. He's cold. Should have brought a jacket. Generous. I mean, is that really what generosity is? So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control, and that he likes railways. Again, the whole it's a good start. timetable thing Other meetings doesn't may necessarily be suggest I hope that you will be trends. able to come back again. Well, it's you just that... For 10 minutes. You didn't even ask me any questions. Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, that's I convenient. shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Was it? Oh, we've got Nietzsche really? moustache. Hastings, I believe now we moustache. have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Oh my god, it's a little grey cells again. Now it is time again. for us to use our grey matter. But it's not what you said in the subtitles. Let us now try and get our brain oh, cells okay, to work. You. What do the victims have in common? They're dead. Yeah. Wait, no. Did he? No, his wife did. I don't know. The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Doctor Clark. We so the murderer need. wants people to have sore throats. We'll pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Doctor Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit, to Justin. I will it's do very it myself, lucky you must remain in London that just in case ABC this sends murderer is picking letter. people who both sought very helpful well, throat issues and had matching names, like letters in the names. Unless this guy was seeing a lot of patients. Thank you for coming, Mr. They Byron. also lived in places Lady that began with the same letters as their first her name. On the first floor. Please oh. excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Are you leaving Cheston for good? I'm being fired Ms. Gray for sexual very harassment. Miss stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, She's not fond of yeah. my position. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. Hey, hey, free room in the house. Let's loot it. It is now the right time. For what? What are you... Eh, twiddle your moustache. There we go. It's closed. Hats. Nothing we can do with hats. It would 
be rude to make lady. Okay. I am not going to leave Comsign. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Just leave without actually doing anything. It like, did he question you? To make I don't know. Wait any longer. I'm guessing I'll be coming back down here and doing shit. Uh, I'm in so much pain! I'm gonna loot your stuff. Oh, okay. Do her first. <laughs> 